Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I have a follow-up for you to my previous video that I've made all about co-living. It turns out a lot of you are either curious about co-living or have been thinking about it, have questions, this, that, and the other, and so I wanted to make a follow-up answering your questions. This is by far the video I've had the most like curiosity about from you guys and like getting genuine questions from you, not just hate comments. <laughs> see this video um, <laughs> and so I really wanted to respect that and I have the answers to your questions so I figured you know what we are going to do just that and give the people what they want <laughs> to make it a little more fun today is a Friday when I'm filming this and so we're gonna be drinking bottoms up I wanted to get a bottle of wine and like sip on some wine or champagne or something for this just to you know celebrate the end of another week and just chill with you guys like we're hanging out one-on-one -on -one, just throwing a few drinks back um i don't have any wine at the moment though all i have is beer which i'm not even the biggest beer fan but whatever so today i am drinking a boulder beer it is called shake it is a dark chocolate porter don't know what that means yeah, you can't even really see this. I got it at Trader Joe's and actually it's pretty decent. So if you are of the legal age and would like to drink with me, cheers. Let's answer some questions. So just to kind of recap from my last video, I did talk about what co-living is, how much it costs, what the physical spaces are like, what the amenities are like, and who it may be a good fit for. So if you're interested in any of those and want to hear someone talk about it, definitely go ahead and check out my previous video. Today I'm strictly answering your questions. And so I had a question asking about how much stuff are you allowed to bring? And quick disclaimer, for all of these questions, my answer is just going to be based on my experience with the specific co-living company I went with, who I lived with, which was common co-living. Um, I can't speak for any other co-living agency, and honestly, I can't really even speak for common because it was two years ago when I lived with them. Their policies may have changed or been updated in the meantime so definitely if you do have further questions after this just reach out to whatever company you're looking into just reach out to them directly and i'm sure they'd be happy to answer they also a lot of times have like frequently asked questions pages where i'm sure you can find a lot of other answers as well so just to preface all of that how much stuff are you allowed to bring there is really no like limit. Um, it's basically just what you can fit in your private room that you're renting. So it was pretty frowned upon to like leave your own personal possessions in like the living room or the kitchen and whatever since they are supplying everything that goes into those rooms and you know they take care of all the furniture and appliances and this that and the other so um, at least with me and my roommates none of us left stuff in the common areas just as a courtesy to each other so whatever you can fit in your own private room that you're paying rent for you can bring next question are you allowed to decorate yes of course again sticking with the like in your own private room that you're renting absolutely I don't think you could like paint over the walls or anything, but just typical decorating like you do in a normal apartment, absolutely, you can put up pictures and yeah, you can decorate your space, uh, just nothing permanent, obviously. Is there any storage? Um, so the only storage I had was this tiny 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 <laughs> closet in my bedroom just like a normal closet like you'd have in a bedroom um all closets in new york are f microscopic 
and so I literally think the closet I had in my room was probably no lie like this wide and this deep probably like three feet by two feet which is for a fashionista that broke my heart <laughs> i kind of expected it going into it though and again that's just for new york uh, that's the standard in the city and so that's how all buildings are constructed it's gonna vary city by city I would just recommend, you know, whatever is common for the city you're looking into is probably what you're going to get at the specific location you're inquiring about. Some may even have like storage units you can rent or uh, like a basement. I will say um, the first co-living complex I lived in, remember I lived in two separate ones. If you watched my first video, the first one did have a basement where you could store your bikes. Uh, so that was outside of like your closet but that was it as far as storage goes were there any negatives or things I didn't expect going into it um yeah I mean yes and no really okay so <laughs> I've mentioned a couple times now that I don't like living with with roommates which I knew coming into common, I was going to have to have roommates. That's kind of like the whole idea, right? Um, <laughs> and the first place I lived at, there was one roommate who was very messy. I'm talking like leaving mold in the community spaces within like the coffee maker and just not cleaning up after himself. It was pretty gross. And so, that was unexpected. I, I reached out to Common and they were less than helpful about it, which, you know, yeah, that was kind of my overall experience with Common and their support team, pretty less than helpful. Um, and so, yeah, I really wasn't the biggest fan of, you know, just the Common team and the support that they had for their tenants uh it was basically like you rent you sign your lease and then you really never hear from them again there are a lot of instances where i reached out for help on something and their <laughs> team members literally had no idea what they were talking about like i could have just found the answer easier myself um <laughs> there <laughs> there was one really funny instance um that involved me sending a letter. You know how in apartment buildings and I think in buildings in general, where you get your mail, there's often a little slot that says outgoing mail. Um, <laughs> I had sent out a letter to my brother. This was during COVID and my niece had just been born. And so I was, you know, I was sending out letters to family. That's fun. That's a way to stay connected. And it didn't get sent for like two months. And so I reached out to comment about it and they said, oh, we, we don't have any outgoing mail slots with our mail systems. So just take it to the post office. And so I literally sent them a picture of our mail receiving area and the little bar that says, outgoing mail and I, I was pretty snarky in it because they had had several instances up until that point where they had just been given stupid answers like that and I, I think I said something like okay so if the outgoing mail slot doesn't actually mean outgoing mail maybe you should change it and I just never heard back but uh anyway yeah negatives yes and no I guess it's pretty typical what you experience with most apartment complexes maybe a little subpar less helpful than most i would say i wasn't the biggest fan next question is there enough room to both work and relax does it feel like you're living on top of each other uh this is a really good question so I had the unique experience of being in a co-living building both before COVID and the pandemic and the work from home shift and whatever, and during the pandemic. So before the pandemic, I had three roommates. So there was four of us total in the apartment and 
all of us had office jobs. So all of us were out pretty much all day, every day. And then when we came home, it was essentially just to go to bed. Um, really didn't see each other very much just because we all have our own individual lives whatever now when the pandemic started and <laughs> everything was in that really scary time we all transitioned to working from home it was very weird um it took us a while to get into a rhythm of what works for us and it's going to just depend on your apartment situation like how well you get along with your roommates um how much you're involved in each other's lives at this point I was very close with all three of my roommates and one of my roommates actually went home to California for the entire pandemic. So she was not in the apartment. So there were just three of us in this small four bedroom apartment. And for the first like week, we tried doing rotations where like one or two of us would be out in the living room. Another one would be working from their room. Um, things like that and it was really fun like the first week because we just were talking with each other and hanging out it was like hanging out with your friends all day but like getting paid and doing half the work <laughs> but after about two weeks we all started to really get on each other's nerves and i think i think almost everyone encountered that with whoever you were living with whether it was roommates significant others families whatever it was a hard adjustment going to just being around each other all day, every day, as it is, right? And so by the end of that lease, we were all just working from our rooms all day, every day and trying to like get as much separation as we could so that we wouldn't like kill each other, <laughs> essentially. Um, so yeah, it truthfully, it did kind of feel like we were living on top of each other. Again, that's for a couple of reasons. I think a big part of it is just because of how small the apartments are in New York. Um, like I mentioned, we were in a four bedroom apartment, but it couldn't have been more than a thousand square feet. Like it was small, <laughs> small. The size of my closet right now is like the size of my bedroom. And so, yeah, it's difficult, but I think just keeping an open and honest dialogue between you and the other people that live in your space is going to help. Just don't keep things bottled up. You know, if someone is bothering you or if, you know, work schedules are messing with your schedule or whatever, just talk about it. I think the quicker and like easier you're able to communicate about it, the better better it's going to be in the long run. Things aren't going to bottle up and boil over and what have you. That kind of goes along with the next question, which was, is it difficult to work from home? Again, just find what works for you um, and go from there. Talk about it, experiment. It's probably going to take a while to find your groove and whatnot, but yeah, it's doable. It's definitely doable. Next question. Were your roommates disruptive? Honestly, I can say at both locations, no. Everyone was very respectful. And again, this is just my personal experience with the, what would it have been, six other people that I lived with throughout the two moves. Um, everyone was very respectful. And in the off case where someone was being loud or whatever, I'm not afraid of like bringing that up and just talking about it. And so I think that's going to be your best bet. Whatever it was, it would get resolved immediately because more often than not, people just don't realize that they're being disruptive or, you know, you're trying to sleep or take a nap or whatever. So no, I would say for the most part, my roommates were very respectful. And I've, I think I've said this in a video before. I know I've said it just in conversation with other people, whether it was with family or friends or whatever. Um, my living situation with the last location that I was at with Common, where I was friends with all three of my roommates, that was the 
best living situation I think I've ever had. It was really fun. We were all respectful. We all had our own lives, but would hang out with each other whenever we wanted. And it was a really good living situation. And I got very lucky because we were all just four random roommates. So it could have easily been a lot worse but yeah i feel very lucky with that living situation are there any alternatives that i would recommend to co-living for living in a new area and meeting new people that's the thing co-living is pretty like it's in its own lane um i know there are such things as like co-ops where it's kind of similar but um it's more of like a communal type it's kind of like a village type thing i i don't really know do your own research on that i would say the closest thing i could recommend are there are housing groups on facebook where they have them for like every city and you can add yourself and People will make posts like looking for a female roommate here's a little bit about us here's you know whatever whatever um, and then you can kind of reach out to people that way if you want to meet them before you would think of living with them um, I know there are apps too specifically for New York I know there's one called Nooklin which I tried to use um, before I moved there to, when I was kind of testing the waters and figuring things out it's sort of the same as like the Facebook groups where people just post about what they're looking for and you know what their budget is, the kind of style of apartment they're looking for. Um, it's not as structured though as co-living, so like your utilities aren't included, your amenities aren't included, your places aren't furnished, anything like that. And so I really think for all that's included with co-living situations, it's your best bet just because it's really easy. There are so many less things you have to worry about than traditionally just finding random roommates. I hope that answered the question. I don't know actually. <laughs> Next question, are your belongings safe and are there locks on the doors? <laughs> so I'm only laughing because I have a story. <laughs> So the first day that I was living in my new space, I thought that our apartment was much more high tech than it actually was. And <laughs> there was some sort of like iPad thing in our kitchen and it looked like a security system that would like lock all your doors or unlock them or, you know, whatever. And so I was nervous about this. I, I had just moved in, like all my stuff was scattered everywhere. I was really nervous and I, I like I had never met these people, so I don't know what they're what they're like. So I locked my bedroom door as I was leaving to go into the city. So yes, there are locks on the doors. However, when I returned, I discovered that the iPad I had seen was not a security system, it was temperature controls. <laughs> So I locked myself out of my room. Um, it was very embarrassing. I remember it was like a Saturday, no one was working. I had to go to the bodega downstairs, buy some like $10 bobby pins and try, to, I had to like pick my lock. And it was very embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so. For me and for Common, no. You cannot lock your door behind you as you leave. You just kind of have to build that rapport with your roommates to kind of get the vibe of whether or not they're sketchy, if they're gonna steal your shit, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. Um, I will say that with Common anyway, we were given the contact information of our roommates through their app or their portal or whatever. And so you knew exactly who you were living with. You had their phone numbers. I think you had their last names too. So should anything have happened, you can kind of narrow it down to like three or four culprits, which I think deterred people from trying anything like that. So I felt relatively safe. Um, I definitely, it took a little while to adjust to it, but I mean, yeah, I don't know why they don't have individual locks on rooms. That would make sense, but 
I don't know. Okay, and our last question. How do you get started and how do you apply? So it is essentially the exact same as any other rental application. Um, for me, I know I had to get like a co-signer or a guarantor or whatever because New York rentals are very weird. You have to be earning at least 40 times the monthly rent in order for you to just apply by yourself. And if you choose to have a guarantor, like if you can't meet that 40 times requirement, your guarantor has to make 80 times the monthly rent, which is absolutely ridiculous since basically no apartments in New York fall under around 2000, definitely none less than 1500. So that is quite a bit you have to be making. I got a guarantor, uh, I know with Common, they actually accepted a third party guarantor system, which is basically an online service where you pay a one month fee. So like for me, it was about $1,700 to get this company to co-sign for you, which I, didn't have any other options at the point or at that point in time. Um, but yeah, as far as like applying and getting started, it is the exact same as a traditional rental application. They're gonna ask about employment. They're going to ask you all the things you typically find. For me, I know uh, I signed when I was still living in Wisconsin. So I signed Sight Unseen as I talked about in the first video and they were willing to do like a FaceTime walkthrough with me to make sure that I liked the place and was okay with it before I signed on to it. Um, of course, in doing that, you don't see the neighborhood and things like that, which is very important, especially in New York. Um, but yeah, just like any other regular apartment. That is it, you guys. That is all I have for you. I hope I answered all of your questions. Um, if you have any more, please feel free to leave them below. I can make another follow-up to this one if you want, if you still have lingering questions, but hope this was helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Thank you for asking your questions and interacting with the last video. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're new here, hi, welcome. Subscribe below. I post every Wednesday and Sunday so you can come hang out with me here at that time. Enjoy your weekend. I guess this is going up Sunday, so enjoy your week. Sorry. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.